Chronicle is closed captioned for the hearing impaired with a grant provided by Bull Worldwide Information Systems. Nothing could be finer. Craftsmanship that people put into them. Than to be inside a diner. Spectacular little places. Eggs and sausage, comfortable conversation, neon and nostalgia. They're a, they're a piece of history. Diners are a piece of history. Diner dealers, photo fanatics, wondrous waitresses, even an attack rooster. Mike Barnacle meets them all. Some people collect stamps, and some people have a boat in their backyard that they work on. But Dave Waller has a diner in his backyard. Devoted to diners, next. Tonight, Peter Mahegan, Mary Richardson, with Andrea Hall and Mike Barnacle. Chronicle, the New England News Magazine. Nighthawks at the diner. Hammers 49er. There's a rendezvous of strangers around a coffee in the night. All the gypsy hats. There's something about a diner that's unlike anything else. Is it the food, the characters, the history that attracts people to these crammed quarters and oversized portions? Whatever it is, this neat little package of Americana has inspired many a diner fan. Part of the great appeal is that they are so unique in their image, the use of the materials. There are no other buildings that are shaped like that, that you go inside for a meal. Richard Gutman is the author of American Diner, quite literally the Bible for anyone interested in this formica-laden, stainless steel and glass-enameled American institution. I was lucky enough to get interested in diners when they were undiscovered to a certain extent. In the early days, if you went up and took a picture of a diner, people thought there was something the matter with you. And nowadays, the number of people who take out their cameras before they go in for a meal is astounding. Find out if these blueberries stain my denture. Is that, is that way you'll know if they're real or not? Is that the idea? That's a kind of a place that if you don't show up a couple of mornings and you come the next day, they say, where were you? Ice clock, honey. I meet all my friends. I do the crossword puzzles like the start of a terrific day. Follow pro with tata sauce, Bobby, please. The Capitol Diner in Lynn, 18 stools, a few tables, a 21-inch counter, and many characters. There's the boss, Buddy Fennell. They claim he whips up the best omelet in town. You don't want to know about Buddy live on the air. He's got a sign that in the window that says, sorry, we're open. There's his son, Bobby, who's responsible for updating the diner. Bobby's changed his things. Now he has margin. First time ever. Then there's Charlene. The quick-witted cook. Yeah, the only thing missing are the fuzzy slippers and the curlers, and I figure in a couple of years I've been here long enough, I can do that too. And yes, there are waitresses. And then there's Marie. From me, you and Carol and Buddy, okay? If you'd like to improve your memory skills, watch Marie in action. Uh, a cup of water, please. Hey, okay. okay, Bobby. You might have a fry at the table. Do they have a fry? No, I got it already. He gave it to me already. Joe, this is your crab meat, hon, okay? Your bag of soup is in there. Sure, I'll get you some. Thank you. Your feet have to start killing you after a uh, while. I wear good shoes and I wear good stockings, support stockings, so when I run there, my feet are good. What I see, you can open up a diner, but this is years of cultivating, cultivating of generations of customers, and uh, you just got to keep it going for them. I've known Bud. We got married at the same time, and he's become a habit now. And makes the best omelet in town. Right, Bud? That doesn't even know what year you get married. I have to come in, and he reminds me.
the story on the roosters out there? Real character rooster. There's a company named it Charlie. I think it was after the girl in the kitchen. The rooster was? No, it was that. <laughs> now, I could say something, but I'll leave that one alone. Home to all kinds of characters, men, women, and rooster, the Capitol is an old-time favorite of Larry Coltrera. Capitol, it sort of embodies everything a diner should be. That's a compliment, because Larry is one of America's most ardent diner fans. This was possibly the most famous diner in America, Rosie's, where they did the bounty paper towel commercials. It's a trolley car converted into a diner. It's built about 1941 by Jerry O'Mahony. It is now in London, England. Impressed? How about another 688 of these? That's how many diners this fanatic has photographed and kept logs on over the years, not to mention the plethora of memorabilia collected from all over New England. This came from the last diner in my hometown. I was able to buy it when the diner was up for auction. In fact, when they closed, I told a friend of mine, those are going to be mine. And they were. <laughs> now the waitress said, eggs and sausage and side of toast, a coffee and a roll. When I first brought my wife down, I says to her, I don't want you to be embarrassed because the silverware might not match. I says, but the food is delicious. The only thing I haven't put in there yet is a little bit of wine. Tastes like something you would cook at home. This is what you call corned beef hash. It's called the number five on my menu. Here you go. Thank you. It was the quest for the perfect breakfast that brought Randy Garbin into diner hunting. After years of unsatisfying meals at chain restaurants, one day, Randy decided to try Henry's Diner in Alston. I noticed how classic it looked. And um, when the breakfast finally arrived, my love for diners arrived with it. And that was only the beginning. Since then, Randy and his partner, Margie Norman, founded Roadside, a quarterly tabloid dedicated to the American diner. When it's delivery time, it's Randy and Margie who do the job all 25,000 copies to over 100 diners in Massachusetts. But they don't mind. How else would they get to try today's special at the Blue Moon Diner in Gardner? We had quite the run on liver and onions because it was unusual today. We don't have it. It's feast of famine. Some days you get hit with 10 orders, and some days you get hit with one. Looking for a new twist on an old favorite? Try this recipe from Skip Scipioni, police officer turned restaurateur. What I'm doing is deep frying liver. And we put the gravy and the onions over it after. So it's an unusual way of doing it. Not too many places do it this way. To be in this business, you have to enjoy food. And it's very difficult to cook it and getting it the right temperature to get it out of there. You've got to poke it and so forth. I'm going to wait for no blood to come out. Well, the food is the best diner I've ever been in my whole life. It's not only the liver and onions, or the homemade spaghetti sauce that brings success to the Blue Moon. It's Skip's determination to keep the old traditions while bringing in the new. The old diner, back in the old days, there was only a small grill here. A very small grill was located here. Here, located here, was a very small fryer because of the influx of business and trying to keep things going, we had to add a bigger grill and take those two small items out. You gotta turn the, the, the diner around. You gotta keep turning it over, in other words, getting people in and out of here as fast as you can in order to make a profit. And by the way, the Blue Moon was put on the National Register of Historical Landmarks in 1987. Hey, Truck stops mainly get fuel and stuff, and you know they, they serve a lot of fast food also. A diner is more of a family-owned place that just tries to serve good food. Well, I don't go to truck stops, I only go to diners. Devoted to diners. More in a moment.
Well, I was first attracted to it by the by the 40 style diner, kind of a campy old stainless steel and wood. And these these green ones, which I have, were actually from a 1927 Coleman diner that was demolished. That was down in Franklin. We had somebody in today that were asking if this was an actual train car at one time. I was just sent this this uh, nice matchbook from a diner that used to be in Seekonk. You're a, you're a piece of history. Diners are a piece of history. What brings diner files together? Diner love, of course. Not only are diners giant antiques, but there's nothing like them beyond the borders of the United States. The American diner goes back 118 years, way back when an entrepreneur by the name of Walter Scott tied a wagon to one of his horses and started selling sandwiches during off hours in Providence. That eventually led to the 1950s classics that we know today. Craftsmanship that people put into them is something that is hard to recreate now, and that's part of the reason why people look back, is that these were spectacular little places that are hard to recreate, but can be restored to their former glory. The question is, does every diner deserve to be cherished forever? Take this one for sale in North Carolina. It has the original grill, and this has four or five burners, nothing underneath. I mean, if you slop your eggs around, they're on the floor. It's Not amazing. every diner but, can be and easily and salvaged, and, and, and yet Gutman and Company like. can't help but be disappointed Marble each County. time another one yeah. quietly disappears. Like the Pullman Diner that used to stand at Arlington and Mass Avenue, it was destroyed 15 years ago. Yet the Pullman and many others were immortalized by artist John Bader in over a hundred paintings. There's a good rich smell all around them. Something heavy, but pleasing. The interior is old, but gorgeous. There's more natural woodwork than in most diners, and this wood is a deep and shiny kind that reflects the light nicely. Diners have inspired more than one artist over the years. In Worcester, with author John O'Connor, images of diners came up every time he put pencil to paper. Been coming to diners my whole life. My uh, father took me to diners. Grandfather took me to diners. My grandfather was a uh, registry cop. He spent a lot of late nights drinking coffee in diners. Probably days too, if you were. A lot for the of registry. days, most likely, right? <laughs> <laughs> John O'Connor's novel, Box Nine, will be published in November, and the Worcester diners will then make their literary debut in one of his novel settings. When you go out to diners, in your mind, do you rank them by style or look or things like that? Uh, you have favorites. I have favorites, definitely. Um, I think I like the older ones a little bit better, the smaller ones. I like to over, uh, overhear, listen to uh, conversations in the next booth, and uh, a lot of times I'll make notes on just uh, non sequiturs and different phrases that are said. Different diners seem to contribute more <laughs> than others. There's that great clock. Always just a couple of minutes fast and very plain. White face, black numbers and hands, sitting on the roof. The Boulevard Diner is a classic Worcester lunch car, meaning it's the kind the Worcester Lunch Car Company used to build in the 1930s. But not many have as glitzy a clock as the Boulevard, and few have the likes of Michael Quercio hanging around. Now we dug this diner, it took us 14 hours to dig, dig the diner. Because the guy had 15 hours because his diner was coming from Southbridge Street. It was a brand new diner, coming down on wheels. If you think he's a character, take a peek inside. Today's topic, a certain waitress on vacation. I've seen Lucille Ball, all the movies she made, and she looks like Lucille Ball when she was young. Is that why you come here? Huh? Is no, that, no. Get a peek at her? I've been coming here for I've quite a while. Here. I've been coming here for a long time. My oldest brother, he came from California. He called, he called me over there and he said, come here, I want to talk to you. He said, this will be the first apple pie and ice cream you ever had. 
Probably, I was only six years old. How much did it cost? Do you remember? Fifteen cents. Fifteen yeah. cents? Boy, those are the good old days. I'll tell you. Fifteen cents. Good old days. And I thought I felt like a I big wheel. Was a I, was a I was uh, ten years old when they put the dining in here. Owner John George may not be so spry anymore, but it was his good work and dedication to the first owner that led him to take over the diner in the mid-60s. Since then, he, and now his son Jim, have served many a plate of home-cooked pasta and meatballs. One hour and 15 minutes to be all done with meatballs. And yet, times are a little tough. To bring in more business, the boulevard stays open at night and on weekends to attract a later and younger crowd. There's also competition from newer diners that go. offer Sweet more seats and updated and menus. Thank you. Thank you very much. What kind much. of dressing would you like? We have oil and vinegar, we have a creamy French, and we have a spicy Italian. It's not easy owning a Worcester lunch car. The Miss Worcester Diner, a landmark right across from where the factory used to be, has changed hands several times. Current owner, Frank Ruggieri, says there is more to this business than just cracking a few eggs on the grill. Oh, yeah. We keep the prices down low and quality high. And the way things are, the economy being down, we do the best we can to keep everybody here. So why not just quit, sell the diner for a reasonable price, and move on to something new? That's a question Michael Barkowitz of the Bluebell Diner asks himself all the time. Yet it's that certain diner mystique that keeps him going. People come from uh, far away just to come and see a Worcester Diner. Where are the Worcester Diners? You go away and people are flabbergasted that you run a diner. You know, it's a big topic of conversation. You can be an engineer, you can do this, you can do that. But when you're a diner, ooh, it's pretty good. Some are probably, uh, I can't tell you that any that are particularly greasy. Well, not this one. We're very picky. Like I said, we close at 2.30, but we spend a good hour, hour and a half cleaning it. Devoted to diners. More in a moment. There is a revival going on up by Lake Sunapee in New Hampshire. Tucked away behind the peace and quiet of a country setting, there's a giant antique called the Apple Tree Diner, a 1929 Worcester lunch car. Young antique lover Dave Waller is restoring it. I like old stuff anyway. I like, um, some people call it nostalgia, but I think it's just 
old stuff. Um, a diner certainly falls into that category. My grandfather, when I bought it, couldn't figure it out. He was like, well, when are you going to open up, next week? And I said, well, I don't even know if I'm ever going to open it up. And he just... Dave's grandfather ran a diner for years, the Flying Yankee in Lynn, Massachusetts. Dave's mother, Carol Waller, remembers. He ran the diner for 25 years without a key because it was never closed and it was never locked. He was open 24 hours a day. He sold it to a company who wanted to put a gas station on that location. And he thought they were going to move it to another location, but they didn't. They bulldozed it. Dave bought the apple tree for $19,000, but he's not interested in getting any returns. He just wants to make sure another piece of yesteryear is preserved. You know, some people collect stamps, and some people have a boat in their backyard that they work on. Maybe their boat will never even go in the water, you know? Maybe this diner will never sell hamburgers again. But I'm only going to live to be... Hey, 80 if I'm lucky. Um, this diner could live to be two or 300 years old. Dave may not be too keen on making money for nostalgia's sake, but others certainly are. In fact, the last couple of years have seen a trend in diner-style restaurants from Los Angeles to Maryland. The Silver Diner in Rockville, Maryland, opened just a month ago, and already the operations turned to gold. The Silver Diner project has taken Rockville by storm, and there are plans to open up in the Boston area next year. But these are all new replicas. What about profiting from restoring old ones? Well, that's an entirely different question, according to diner broker John Keith. It's like a car where you don't really know until you start pulling it apart. As an example, this diner here looks kind of rough on the outside, but that's only the beginning of the problems. Once you pull off the exterior skin, these things are wood walls inside behind this metal or stainless steel skin, and it's usually all rotted out. So who would be daring enough to keep this old thing on their lot? Well, none other than Bryant Hill from OB Hill Motor Transportation Company. It was going to be demolished, and we didn't want to see that happen. We've moved uh, many. We've never really taken this kind of position on, on a dime, but this particular unit we did. Uh, it's a 1953 Fadero. It's, it's a plain Jane, but I think it'll find a home. The moral of the story? Well, as long as there are diner fans to look after them, this American institution, the diner, seems here to stay. Not a waitress calls,
This is Peter Mahiga. Tomorrow night on Chronicle, life on the lighthouse route in Nova Scotia. We'll meet characters like island salesman Bob Douglas and fisherman Cecil Wagner and travel to Peggy's Cove, a picturesque piece of the province that attracts tourists like honey does bees. Navigating the coast in Nova Scotia, tomorrow night on Chronicle. Not a waitress called Exercising Now side of toe you